on and out, see them all. There's another one there, bloody hell. That's six already, that's out. The police and the council have brought this area lower than it's ever been before. I won't give it up because I like to earn money. Where I'm from, you'll stand on a corner, you'll get locked up. Put the lamp through, yeah. I'll just get the money and then he'll sit, pull his trousers down, get his cock out and do what he'll do. Get the condom on and start. Yep. Tickle his balls to make him come quicker. That's one of the tricks of the trade, isn't it, kid? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done a blowjob, sex and blowjob, and then sex and blowjob again. We haven't been out half an hour. <laughs> My Johnnies. Oh, you see, they're not getting it bare back off me. I hate when all the cars go around, you think they're going to come down here, but they don't carry on going round. <laughs> I have got a couple of punters lined up. You know, a couple of regulars. I've got one at 11 o'clock for 280. Mm -hmm. And that's only an hour's service. And all he does is plays with my feet, massages my feet for an hour and gives me 280 quid. And I've got another guy who comes with her, me and her see him, and all we do is stamp on his cock, literally. And he pays us 150 pound each Half an hour, half an hour to an hour, 45 minutes roughly. And all we do is stamp on his cock and it makes him come. Usually we'll go out about half nine and we're back home about 12 and that's it. I don't really know my way around Leeds, it's just Holbeck that I know. Some of them are all right, but some of them can be right dicks. You'll stand there, the car will stop and you'll go over and you'll ask them if they want business. If they say, yeah, you'll get in the car. You'll go to a place where it's nice and quiet. And then if they want a blowjob, you'll give them a daft blowjob with a Johnny on. And then before you do the blowjob, you ask for the money, where some of the lads will pay you up front, where some of them will be dickheads and try and pay you afterwards. And it doesn't work like that. You always get the money up front. I was the fastest girl in East Yorkshire. Two years in a row. I did uh, cross country and 100 meter sprint. Under 13s, under 12s, under 11. First girl back 99. First girl back no, 2000. First girl back 2001. I go down Holbeck maybe twice a week, three times a week. Sometimes I only have to do one client and I'm done. Some of them are just, like, really sad and lonely, uh, and they just, like, want someone for attention, really. And then you get some of them that... They're just, like... They want all the, like, domineering sort of stuff and that, and I don't really like that sort of stuff. I just prefer to just get done and get out of there. A girl called Queenie took me under her wing. She came with me on the first client, and it... Oh, God, it were awful. She had to get into the back of the car with me because I just didn't know what to do. I was crying halfway through. Um, and she gave me some gear, uh, which sort of made me like a bit all over the place. Um, but it helped me cope with it. As soon as I have been with a client, I've come home and I'm straight in the bath and I'm scrubbing myself. I made myself quite poorly. I had a skin infection because I rubbed myself that much with bleach. Er, uh, no, you don't. He'll have them. Every foster home I went to, the social worker always made sure that they'd be happy for me to have me quail. I was abused. I ended up in foster care, taken away from my parents. I think it makes it easier for me because I think, basically, I'm a shell of a body. They might as well have me. Do you know what I mean? I'm an abused person. Why not let them? Just 
uh, suck hot water into it. Fucking hate digging me. If anything, I wish I smoked here. I snapped a penny in it. How stupid is that? It'll push itself out. You know, like war victims. The shrapnel pushes itself out. Foreign body. Got introduced to heroin and crack cocaine via a so-called friend. She injected me straight away and I've got a little scar on my arm there from where she gave me an abscess. I was 16. Just gonna do just this little bit now. I remember having bruises all over my arms and my mum saying to me, something's going on with you. I had to admit what I was doing. My dad was absolutely livid. He, um, he couldn't understand it. And he uh, made me cook up in front of him. He wanted to know what it was all about. He wanted me to sit there and inject myself in front of him. And so purposely, I went in where I knew I wouldn't be able to get it and just cried to him and said, Dad, I can't do it, please, please. My mum cried her eyes out when she saw me with no clothes on. She literally broke down because I was just... She said I was like a frail old woman. And I did my first rattle uh, in my mum and dad's pub. Uh, it's horrible. My dad he used to stay up with me during the day and my mum would sit up with me on a night and they took it in turns day and night. My brother, God love him, holding me air while I'm throwing up. Three years older than me, didn't have a fucking... I was ripping his fucking world apart. They've got a 16-year-old daughter, 16-year-old sister who was on heroin. I came off of it and, and within two days, I robbed my brother's PlayStation games to go sell for money. And that just led into a routine of, I'd have heroin to go work, and then I'd have heroin to forget about working. It's just a total vicious cycle. I'm angry at myself. Disgusting in myself. I've got three beautiful children that live with my mum because I can't look after them because of the drugs. They should have been enough. But they weren't. I'm sick of it now. I'm ready to give it up. When I got out of jail, yeah, I was completely sorted. And then um, I got raped. That just sent me straight back down. I know, like, loads of people get raped and they don't turn to drugs, but I did as a comfort, drink and drugs. Come here, then. Come here, then. This is my little puppy. This is Princess. Hey, You see her? She's a cross between a staff and a patterdale. And she's 11 weeks old. And she's my life, aren't you? My life, yes, you are. She needs me. She needs me every single day. She needs me to do things for her. She needs me to look after her. And that's what I need. I need to be needed. Don't I? Hey? And the fact that she depends on me, that's what I love about her. She's my baby, aren't you? <laughs> You'd rather have your kids? Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. 100%, 100 million percent. But I know that that's not a possibility at the moment in time. So she's the next best thing. Yeah. Have you always read a lot? Yeah, I started in jail. So I was always down the seg. You know what the seg is, don't you? Down the block. You know, the 23 and a half hour bang on. So all you can do is read. My favourite one, Julia Walters. I feel like I relate to her, I think. Because she was dragged up. 
Even though I was in care and stuff, and she wasn't, she's had a bit of a rough upbringing. It's a really good read. It is. And I'm reading um, Fifty Shades of Grey now. Hey, it's a right dirty bastard book, that. Sorry for swearing, but it's filth. I've done some funny old stuff, but fuck me, is that dirty. Have you read it? He said, you're my everything, darling. Isn't that lovely? It's nice, isn't it, when you first fall in Because I told you I don't trust men, so when you fall in love, it's real nice, isn't it? Before I got with him, we'd chased each other for seven months, each other, but none of us had the uh, backbone to get it off the ground. Seven months. <laughs> Love you too. Oh, I need to get ready. Where are you going? Sell me Fanny in Albeck. I find her attractive, you know, she's, uh, she's funny, she's great feisty and that, ain't she? But I knew what she were about, you know, when I first went out. Before I got with her, I knew what she did and what she were about. It's like she says, she said it's just uh, just work. There's no intimacy wheel that we put her. She don't kiss him and not like that. If a man loves a woman, they don't want anybody else touching the woman, do they? But we've both got habits and I'm not going to rely upon him to fend for me. I do love him. Have you been in love many times? Once before. And I got my heart broke and trod it all over. And I got battered every day. I can't find my key, love. He's going to have to kick me back door in. Hey, I had my back doors kicked in uh, last week for the first time. Up, I loved it as well. Not first time I didn't, because it was a bit painful. So Sammy! Do you worry about it? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. That's why I come out with her. You know, and make sure she's all right. I'm always thinking, you know, is she gonna come back? She needs a little bottle. I've got some ammonia at home. Put that in the bottle. We'll know about it if they get sprayed in your face with that. Lorry driver's assistant has been jailed for a minimum 22 years for the murder and robbery of a Polish sex worker in the Holbeck area of South Leeds last December. Louis Pierre lured his victim to a secluded so-called managed red light area. He launched a sickening, violent attack that left her fatally wounded. It terrifies the life out of me. I know that every single time I work, I'm putting my life in danger. I'm playing with some roulette. It was my own life. But heroin has got a bigger grip on me. Loads of coppers tonight. That punter's on the loose, isn't he? Eight girls he's done now from around here. He's picking girls up, taking them round, paying them for a blowjob. Then, just as he's about to finish, he's battering them, taking the money back off them and raping them. Does it scare you, that? Yeah, it petrifies me. Especially after what I've already been through. What's the, the postcode for the unit? Come to see the quails. Hmm? Where I moved now, obviously, I couldn't keep quails there, could I? I said, I can send them to my mum's allotment, and then I can hand all the safe. And they went, no, no, they'll be all right, just round the corner from here.
Not long ago, about two months or three months ago, me, uh, my partner brought me quails in because I moved out. Can I see them? He did. He brought 12. I always get my food here. It was months ago. He was lying to me then. All right. Said he hasn't got no livestock left. Hello? Hello? Where did you take my quails? Because you never took them in there, he's just told me. The man in there has just told me he hasn't taken any. You said I could come and see them any time. Have you killed them? <laughs>